But then it's not really the best player because you watch the playoffs and you clearly know who the best player is, right? Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. So uh, I was kind of thinking too, um, I wanted to go off a little bit and just kind of talk about, you know, who you think the best team kind of in each each conference is, um, if you're cool talking about that. Um, So look, in the West, we got Utah, Phoenix, the Lakers, and the Clippers, right? I think when, when fully healthy, I would pick the Lakers to win the West. Um, I think the Clippers are probably the second best team in that conference. Really? Um, or, or, I mean, I, I like Utah um, a lot. I think Utah right now is better, but I think if you give me a playoff series, I think the problem with Utah is that they have crumbled like the, uh, like the Clippers have, but I just don't know about how the others are going to step up in big moments. I know Donovan Mitchell will step up, but I just don't know. Um, yeah. And Phoenix, I just don't really know what to think of them. They're really good right now, but a lot of those guys don't have playoff experience. So it's just like, I mean, Devin Booker has no playoff experience. So I just don't know, but wondering your thoughts on kind of who you think the best team in the Western conference is. Yeah. Um, I'd probably go with the Lakers right now. If I had to put my life on it, I'd choose the Lakers to, um, to be the strongest team with a healthy Anthony Davis. Um, and then I'd probably say the jazz, but you are right. Like, I don't know. We don't know how they're going to be in the playoffs, but um, if we're just talking about strength of team and play right now, I'd probably give it to the Jazz. Playoffs, I don't know. You know, who knows who, who, how the Clippers could be, too, you know, with Paul George and, you know, who knows. Hopefully he turns that around and that narrative of Paul George is no longer a thing because I'm I like Paul George a lot, too. But, um, yeah, I don't know. But I, I definitely like the Jazz, the Lakers, Clippers, Jazz. Um, the Suns, honestly, they remind me a lot of last year's Oklahoma City team. And not just because Chris Paul, but you have Devin Booker, who's an elite-level NBA player and on the Suns. And then on the, on the um, Thunder, there was Shy, And their games just reminded me a lot of each other. You know, they're both scoring guards, point combo guards, and – and um, yeah, and the way they play too, almost kind of just reminds me of each other. So I get a lot of thunder vibes. Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, the fact I, I, I see also a lot of a little bit of Miami Heat there too, because they play, yeah. they have some of those guys, right? They have Jay Crowder, but they also have a great defense. And Monty Williams has kind of built a good culture there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the thing with the Eastern Conference is that compared to the Western Conference, there's probably about four or five teams that are in the mix, maybe six if you count the Nuggets, who can at least make some noise. Yeah. In the East, there's not really many teams outside the top three. You mm-hmm. have, I mean, I'm not even sure Milwaukee really is that legit. Um, they, they, they've, really? Because I, my thing is, I think Giannis is great, but I think he does the same thing every year, which is try to drive one on five. Mm-hmm. and. And yeah. if he if he learned to get, have a good post game, I think it'd be over for the NBA because he doesn't have to be an elite level three point shooter, in my opinion. But I think Brooklyn and Philly are the two best teams, and I think because since Embiid's playing at an MVP level, Philly's going to be really hard to guard because their their wings and guards are so big yeah. and they defend. And then Brooklyn just can score with no problem. Yeah. Um, you give the ball to any of those guys, they can just go off and get thirty five points. So, yeah. um, kind of t- tell me, kind of where your thoughts are, are with the yeah. Eastern conference. Do you yeah. think the Bucs are actually legit or do you really think it's a two headed race between Brooklyn and Philly? I, mean, I agree with a lot with what you're saying. I feel like Giannis is um, definitely getting better at shooting, but you're right. They don't really need him to be a three point shooter. If he, if he had more of an inside, um, more of a post game, I feel like that could definitely help them. But I feel like so the thing with the Bucks is um, Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez, and I think those two guys are, like, the, like, X factors in the game, and a lot of their success is going to depend on them, you know, because you get what you get with Giannis, and I think that Chris Middleton is going to be play a big role in their success, but, yeah, for the Eastern Conference, I like the Bucks. I do. I think they're going to do better this year in the playoffs. Brooklyn, obviously, um, I don't know, man. I'm really hoping the Knicks make a run. <laughs> I really hope the Knicks make a run, man. That would be crazy. We get uh, Russell Westbrook and we make a run. But uh, I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, the last NBA thing I want to talk about is I think there's a lot of uh, people sleeping on Damian Lillard. And I think yes, he's been slept, up, slept, slept on for at least, I'm going to say the last five years. No one talks about him. 
I think he's in a top five MVP candidate at the moment. I think he's playing unbelievable and no one talks about him because he is kind of quiet flies under the radar, but he's not, he's not a huge personality, right? He's not like going out and saying a whole thing, a lot of these things to the media. And then he just goes out there and gives guys like 40 points and he's arguably a top five shooter or, or top three shooter in the NBA. So I was kind of thinking, what are your thoughts on Damian Lillard? Why do you think he gets uh, so under the radar? And why do you think people, why do you think people need to change on him? Uh, he's one forward. of my favorite players. Um, I love Dan, man. He's so slept on though. Like he's so like, you're so right. Like you put it the perfect, he's so under the radar, like, but he's not, you know, like he'll just give you a quiet 40. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, players like that. I mean, you've played against people like that. I definitely have where you're like at the end of the game, like, oh my God, they just had 40. That was a quiet 40, quiet 30 or whatever. But yeah, he just lights guys up, dude. Like he lights dudes up and I'm surprised he's not a starter. Honestly, I think he should have started over Luca in the all-star game. Yeah. yeah, If you like that clip from the shred takes podcast show, like, and subscribe to the channel and also look at the description below for full episode details.